Hey YouTube, Kyle Curley here with Arden Industries out of Middleton, Idaho. Um, over the years we've done our fair share of tubular structures and race car chassis work, things of that sort. Um, one part of the process that seems to be a little intimidating to some people is uh, that of tube notching. Uh, getting a tube to fit properly for welding, um, the right angle in the tube, uh, making the tube on the left side of the car match the tube on the right side of the car, that sort of thing. Uh, so we thought we'd throw this little video together um, give you guys a few uh, tips and tricks on our process, um, kind of what we've come up with over the years of doing this, and uh, hopefully you can take away a few little things you can put to use in your own shop and, uh, you know, um, be a little more efficient at it and maybe not so intimidated. Okay, so there's basically three um, basic uh, required pieces of information when notching a new tube to an existing structure. Um, those include uh, the overall length of the tube when it's finished, um, the angle of both of the notches on each end of the tube and also the rotation of both notches on each end of the tube. Oftentimes um, we're not working with tubes that are on the same plane so the tube that you're putting into a structure may have um, you know two different notches on each end on different axes of the uh, of the tube center line I guess if you, uh, if you will. Um, so with those three pieces in mind um, know that you need those three before making the final notch. Um, so kind of make maybe a mental checklist that if you don't have one of those, you're going to, um, you know, you're missing something. So there are a few basic hand tools that we use to simulate a tube in place so that we can then measure the angle of um, the notches that we need to place into the new tube. Um, of those tools are the basic straight edge. This could be anything that holds a straight edge, literally a um, sheared piece of sheet metal. This here happens to be an actual rule. Um, we've used uh, masking tape in some places. Um, you know, pulling from one tube to the other when it's in a tight area and these are hard to get to or hard to get into place. Um, another tool that we use is a sliding T bevel square. I think these are more commonly used in the woodworking industry, um, but they're available at your local hardware store or whatever. Um, literally all you're doing is trying to find anything that will hold an angle for you um, so that you can then transfer that over to your tube notcher. Um, we also use a few spring clamps to just hold things in place while we're, you know, getting the notch angle and from there we'll go into what we actually do to um, find the angles and then transfer that over to our tube notcher. So on this chassis we're building here, this is an altered for a customer of ours. Um, for video purposes, we have added green tape with an arrow pointing to the left on both pieces of tape. Um, these are basically simulating the edge of the tube. So we're gonna have the new tube land just to the left side of each piece of tape. Um, so what we wanna do is have anything to replicate what that tube would look like when it's in place. Um, that's the point of the straight edge and also the clamps here. Um, so we, once you have the location measured out with the tape measure, whatever you need to do, um, clamp your straight edge into place at the correct position. And from there we can take our, um, our little bevel square here and find the angle that we need um, per side to fit the existing structure. Um, on here, just for video purposes, I'm measuring on the left side of the, the square, um, just to give you another little tip. Uh, most tube notchers only like to do um, obtuse angles. This here is obviously an acute angle. Um, sometimes you can't, in this instance, you can get to this side of the, of the straight edge and give you that obtuse angle, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can only get to one side of it. So what we do is basically place, um, once, once you find the acute angle, place this against any sort of straight edge, and you can make, we normally use the edge of our table, you can use, um, make a small uh, line to represent that angle, and all you literally have to do is turn your, your uh, bevel square over and redefine that angle from the 180 degree flat line plane um, to make it an obtuse angle. Now you're at the same angle, but on the obtuse side, which can then be used on your tube notcher. No need for understanding what angle, actual like number wise it is, uh, we don't really care if it's a 20 degree angle or 84 degree angle or what it is. Um, we're, we know we want the tube in this place and we know this is the angle we want so this is all we need. We don't need to worry about um, finding the actual number of the angle that you know we're after. So, so once you have your straight edge laid out um, with the angle that you're after, you can go ahead and cut your tube. Uh, we tend to cut it from center line of one tube to the center line of another tube plus maybe a quarter or a half an inch. That normally gives you plenty of material um, to kind of mess around with until you uh, get that final notch and get it fit the way you want it without getting too short and then obviously it's a it's a scrap piece of tubing at that point so um, once you have your tube cut you can take and um, put it in your notcher we're going to go over to the notcher right now and go over how we transfer this to the notcher itself 
to replicate this same angle. One little um, tip for kind of efficiency is if you know that you're working on the left side of the car and you're going to put the same tube on the right side of the car, you can cut two of these. Um, hopefully everything's the same um, as far as lengthwise. Cut two of them. In this case, this is an inch and a half tube and this is an inch and a quarter tube. So that's going to require a hole saw change out. So what we like to do is cut both sides of the, just the, you know, just the piece of tubing itself, um, cut one for each side. And from there, um, once we have this angle here on our t bevel square, um, since the hole saw is going to be set up for the inch and a quarter tube, um, go ahead and put that same angle on both of these tubes. And that way you're only changing the hole saw once instead of changing from inch and a quarter to inch and a half, back to inch and a quarter for the other side tube and then back to inch and a half again. So just a quick little, um, tip to save a little bit of time maybe and uh, be a little more efficient with it. So um, we'll go over to the tube notch and we'll show you how to transfer this angle. Okay, here we are at the tube notcher. Um, just the uh, Bailey notcher that we use, generic hole saws. Uh, we like the Lennox hole saws. You can find them at Home Depot. Um, so far they've been kind of the best that we've come across. Used to use a lot of steroid stuff, but Lennox really stepped up the last couple of years uh, with their new technology on their hole saws and they tend to last for quite a long time. This one here, as you can see, it's pretty well used. It's probably done at least two cars, um, but for the most part, uh, so far we haven't come up with anything better from the hole saw side of things. So um, once we have our angle here that we just picked up from the car itself using the straight edge for to simulate the tube, um, there's oh, almost on every notcher, there's gonna be some sort of a straight edge that's gonna be in line with the tube itself. For, for our sake and purposes, it's gonna be this block right here. So we basically push this to, uh, angle finder against the, the block and then you can sight down the edge of this surface here, which is the movable surface on the notcher, to come up with this angle here, match those two together. And together, those there should give you the actual angle of the notch that you're looking for on your piece of tube. On your first notch, you want to take as minimal of material as possible. Um, but still get a complete notch so that the um, hole saw is touching material all the way through. Um, at the same time, that gives you as much material on the other end, even if you have to cut some of that off um, to play with your second notch, because that's really where, where things get somewhat critical. Uh, the first notch is usually fairly easy. You put it in place, um, you know, put the notch on it, and then it's back to the car to fit and figure out the rotation of the next notch as well as the angle. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and notch this. Um, there's a lot of talk on the internet about um, hole saw speeds and things like that. For us, we put very light pressure on it and spin it relatively quickly. Um, from the chip load side of things, uh, for us, that makes the most sense. And for the most part, we haven't had really too many issues with hole saws uh, stripping out or you know getting dull or anything of that sort. So um, we're going to go ahead and notch this, and we will be right back on fitting the second notch and finding the rotation of the tube. Something else we really like to do is take our uh, disc sander, which you can probably hear in the background slowing down, um, and take the sharp edges off the edges of the notch itself. Um, keeps you from cutting your hands up when you're working with it, and also gives uh, the material a little more thickness in the weld area, so that you're not only welding that paper thin um, little tail of you know tubing sticking off there. Um, another is part of the process that we go through, um, not sure if everybody does this, is we like to take a file and um, take off any of the burrs inside the tube. I know nobody will ever see it, but uh, it's kind of one of those, uh, if you're gonna do a job, do it right. So um, one little extra step that we go through that nobody ever really sees, but kind of makes you feel better about you know doing the job as best you can. From there, we can go into finding the um, angle and rotation of the second notch. Um, if you place this back here where the overall area is bigger, you can slide it up until it touches at the top. Um, get your notch down here to fit, you know, as intended. And as you can see, it, uh, you know, comes in pretty dang close to the, the line here or the, you know, being parallel with the straight edge that we use to simulate the tube. Obviously it's too long, so we can't bring it up to the tube itself yet. Um, for the rotation of the second notch, place this in where you want it. Um, obviously, you know, located with minimal gaps and that sort of thing. Um, from there, if you can get to the back side of the tube, as long as you put this on the center line of this tube here, um, it allows you to um, mark the rotation of the second notch 
Uh, you can use just a Sharpie or paint pen or whatever you have. Um, so this gives you, you're basically going to put a center, you know, find the center line of the, the tube here, the existing tube, and you're going to transfer that down to um, the tube that you're putting in, and that's going to allow you to make sure that the uh, the um, notches on the correct axes of the new tube you're putting in. So, um, one little tip there. Then from there, to get the overall length, we like to pull the tube out, set the bottom of it where it's going to go, and from there we can, we're going to have to move the straight edge here, but we can mark the overall length of where it needs to be. So, um, before you move the straight edge, because it's where you want, remember you need to always take your, uh, you need to find your angle before you do anything. Um, so take your uh, T-bevel square here and do the same process that you did on the bottom. There's your notch for the, or the angle of the notch for the upper tube. After that's done, you can take the straight edge off because you no longer need it. And take your tube you just fit, and put it on the edge of the tape where you want it here. Fits pretty good there. Line it up with the edge of the tape here where you want it to go. And then you're going to take and put, one tip we like to do is put a, put a line at an angle of the angle of the notch. There's nothing worse than getting a tube halfway done, going over the notcher and come back and find out you, you know, mistakenly notch the tube from the wrong side and now you have a notch going this direction and the tube you're trying to fit it to is going that direction. Um, throwing tube in the, in the garbage is never a good thing. So um, we like to put this little line that always indicates which direction the notch is going. And then from there, just put a, a mark where you want the back edge of the notch to be. So now when you're all said and done, you have, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, you have a, a, a generic line here at an angle telling you which direction the notch goes. You have a spot for the hole saw to start, which is here, and a rotation. So the center of the hole saw should touch it on this plane here before it touches anywhere else. So in essence, your hole saw is going to look like this when it's all said and done and notched. So um, we have the angle, we have the rotation, we know which direction it's got to go, and we have a start point. So now we can go back over to the hole saw and uh, put this on it and see how it comes out. All right, here we are back with the finished tube. I uh, have our inch and a half notch up top. Um, on the angle that we marked it with the center line of the notch as well for the axial rotation of the tube. Um, don't forget to change out your hole saw depending on what side, the size of tube that you're notching to. We almost put an inch and a quarter notch on this, um, but caught it just in time, put the inch in, had to change out the hole saw to the inch and a half, inch and a half upper rail, inch and a quarter lower rail. So um, let's take a minute, see how this fits. We'll line the upper edge up, line it up with the edge of the tape, push it into place. You don't want to have a ton of pressure on this because you don't want to be driving this, to, this rail up. Um, that's a little difficult to replicate over on that side because you're not really sure how much you drove it up and that sort of thing. Um, should be able to just give it a nice little push, shove it into place. As you can see, it fits real well right on the edge of the tape here, right on the edge of the tape up here. And then if you want to look at the notch itself, it fits real well. Um, down here to the lower one. Um, all your notches should fit that way. One kind of rule of thumb we've uh, established is that there should be no areas that you can get a piece of uh, welding rod in to the notch itself anywhere around it. Um, this method makes it real easy to um, not really even have to check that. You can visually look at that and see that it fits really, really nice. We did deburr the edge of the tube um, on the disc sander again, filed the inside to get the burrs out of there. Um, one step that we do after this is we take a sharpie of some sort, mark where the tube layout actually is just some way, um, and you can pull the tube out. Drill a hole underneath of here, where inside that circle you just described with your Sharpie, and another hole here, and that allows, as you're welding, it allows the gas that builds up inside to get escape and go into other tubes and that sort of thing. So every tube on a car we do has a hole behind it so that the gases can get out um, of the main frame rail or wherever it is. So um, one other little tip is to, some people do it, some people don't. We like to take scotch Brite and um, um, on the chrome all anyways, take this black coating off. Um, it's not really necessary. A little bit cleaner weld in my opinion. Um, one little step that we do, we'll scuff this up and scuff this area up anywhere there's a weld so that you're like really on nice clean bare metal. So um, anyways, that's uh, kind of the process from start to finish on putting a tube in a car. Um, hopefully you picked up a few tips and tricks from that and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.